Every Saturday morning, beginning the summer of 2016, I would walk through the this entrance of a local senior home into a grand lobby surrounded with a wall filled with composites of seniors' favorite photos. As I walk through the grand living room, I encounter Madame Wally, who I've been accustomed to meet every week swinging a baby doll on a crib. Every time I come in, she glances up, smile, and calls me, hey honey, come see your baby sister. For four years. Walking through the residence constantly sparked many questions, increasing my curiosity about the puzzle of the brain, all the structural, the functional changes that occur in a brain of a person developing Alzheimer's disease dementia. And I wonder if my fate would be one day similar to theirs as I grow older. Hi, my name is Yara Jacob, and today I will be presenting part of what we do in the lab studying Alzheimer's disease dementia. On today, on this day, after 15 months spent studying Alzheimer's disease for my research project, I recall Madame Wally's story, along with many stories that I heard of people living with Alzheimer's disease. And you may ask, we're in 2021. Don't we have a drug for this devastating disease? Well, my answer is not yet. However, the good news is that the research on Alzheimer's disease is on the marsh. Apparently, to find a drug that prevents Alzheimer's disease, we need to find ways to track individuals at the very early stages of the disease. Apparently, Alzheimer's disease pathology began to accumulate almost years prior to the cognitive symptoms become apparent. Proteins pile up to form sticky aggregates and twisted tangles between and within neurons or brain cells, ultimately leading to tissue loss and brain death. And this cascade began almost years as known to be the preclinical or the presymptomatic stage of the disease. Currently, the diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease happened through clinical evaluation of the cognitive symptoms. However, this method is not a very effective tool because individuals come in with a late stage of the disease where interventions may not be possible. So researchers try to develop brain imaging in order to track individuals at the very early stages where they are still cognitively healthy. PET scan is one example of such tool in which a radiologist will come in, inject a, radio, a small amount of a radio tracer material into the individual arm, and then this person would be put in the scanner. We will see if this, if this tracer will bind to this protein pathology in the brain, so that we infer that the pathology already started to accumulate in the brain of the person. While such tool is a very effective tool to track individuals at the very early stages of the disease, however, it's quite expensive. One brain scan can cost at least $2,000. Wow, that's actually expensive. I mean, at least for those who don't have publicly funded healthcare system like Canada. So researchers move toward finding screening tools that are less expensive. And one such technique known to be the lumbar puncture or spinal tap. A specialist will come in, insert a needle into the spinal cord in between two bones of the individual, known to be the lumbar vertebrate. We'll, extra we'll extract the cerebrospinal fluid collection, collect them, analyze them to identify the different protein pathology circulating in the body. While this technique is indeed more affordable method than conventional brain imaging, however, it might be invasive procedure and not all individuals are comfortable doing such procedure. So what's the solution then? Imagine you walk into a blood lab in order to do a blood test for, to identify protein pathology in the blood. That seems something like science fiction or maybe impossible. But what if I told you if we are not very far away from this reality? Indeed, the recent development of different assay technology has made it possible to identify different proteins in the blood. Let me tell you a, a bit more of what we do in the lab studying Alzheimer's disease. We basically recruit individuals who are cognitively healthy, relatively younger, older adults group, age around six years old or older. They present to be cognitively healthy, no sign of memory impairment or any type of neurological disorder. However, one inclusion criteria for these individuals to be included 
is that they have a family history with the disease, putting them at a very high risk of developing Alzheimer's disease in the future. We take these participants, we do blood work, brain scans, and cognitive evaluation. And we wanted to know whether the blood work can actually reflect what we see of emerging pathology on the brain. And you know what? We were able to find that individuals with the different levels of pathology in their, blood in their blood actually also have an emerging pathology on the brain measured by PET scans. And not only this, participants with the very high levels of protein pathology in their blood indeed had worse, faster cognitive impairment over time. So that seemed like a very cool project, but what does it mean to others? Validating the plasma assays that analyze the different protein levels in the blood will help us implement such procedure, at least for now, in research settings, and perhaps one day in different clinical settings, so that such procedure will allow us to track individuals at the very early stages where they are still cognitively healthy, but perhaps have a higher risk of developing Alzheimer's disease in the future. With the future of such possibilities, people like Madame Wally and others will be able to get ahead of the disease and perhaps one day we'll be able to include such individuals in clinical trials and perhaps one day we'll be able to find a drug that either stop or reverse the progression of Alzheimer's disease pathology so that Madame Wally and others won't have to go through memory impairments and lose the capacity of identifying and recognizing others and their surroundings. Thank you.